Hi, everyone. Welcome to the reality of virtualness of the metaverse. Uh, I am very excited to be back again this year uh, at Harassus. I think this is about my fifth year. Uh, I love this conference. And, um, you know, not only have I been fortunate to be on fantastic panels, as you will see my esteemed panelists here today, but the whole event, uh, you know, has amazing people and, and really incredible discussions. So if, uh, stay here, but when you're done here, I encourage you to go and, and see some of the other panels and, and watch some of the recordings. Um, so without further ado, I will introduce myself. I am Amy Peck. I'm the founder and CEO of Endeavor XR. We really look at, uh, you know, helping companies. We're sort of a strategy and consulting firm and we help companies look at this uh, immersive te te technology and, and look at how to scale within business. And, you know, the very early days of, of my company, you know, back in 2015, which, which I think we count in dog years at this point, um, you know, we really were looking very much at, it was VR and it was a lot of training and process and, you know, how do we improve business outcomes? Um, but it's now slowly shifted to, you know, thanks to a particular company sort of pulling the pin on the uh, metaverse grenade quite recently, um, you know, and now it's like, what is, what is the, the, you know, kind of consumer experience? And it's not just consumer, it's what's the human experience in the metaverse and what does it all mean? Uh, and so, you know, I think we'll have a very lively discussion today. And, and I think let's just dive right in. I want to start um, by having my uh, panelists introduce themselves. So uh, Begum, could we please start with you? Of course. Hello, everyone. I am Begüm Aydınoğlu. I am currently in Istanbul. Uh, I am co-founder of Illizor, which is the world's first meta architecture and technology company creating for a design-oriented metaverse. I'm an architect and computational designer by the profession. Uh, I would call myself a meta architect right now as uh, since three years, uh, I'm pretty much involved in the virtual uh, elements of the architectural design, spatial design, and urban design. Um, so as Ilizor, uh, we are creating uh, for the design-oriented metaverse, and we are doing this uh, through uh, making it accessible through web, AR, VR, uh, mobile, and tablet. Um, this is like a brief summary. Fantastic. Uh, and, and Sam? Hi, uh, I'm Sam Glassenberg, CEO of a company called Level X. Uh, I've spent my career in the video games industry at companies like LucasArts making Star Wars games, uh, spent many years at Microsoft, where my team was basically responsible for pushing the cutting edge of video game graphics, or as people might say today, the underlying technology of what people are calling the metaverse. Um, after that, I ran a company that did games for major Hollywood movies. And now I run a company, like I said, called Level X that makes video games for doctors. Uh, so we're essentially using video game technology and design uh, to accelerate the adoption curve of new skills, uh, new treatments, um, new guidelines in medicine. Fantastic. And Dave Rhodes. Hi, good morning and good evening to all of you. I'm Dave Rhodes. I am an SVP at Unity Software. We are a uh, game engine software company, uh, first and foremost, Forged in Games. We have a pretty significant business outside the gaming industry, uh, supporting people like Sam in building immersive, interactive, real-time 3D applications in other industries manufacturing, construction, healthcare, financial services, uh, training and guidance, et cetera. And uh, I run that business unit and uh, honored to be here. Fantastic. And uh, directly from the metaverse, Andrew McGregor. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, my name is Andrew McGregor. I'm the founding director of a research initiative called Umwelt's. And basically what we're doing is developing wearable technologies for animals that find landmines. Uh, so somewhere how to a Fitbit can tell if you're walking or running. You can use accelerometer uh, data combined with machine learning to enable an animal to communicate to a human when it finds a landmine. Uh, the animals aren't harmed, but it's yeah using new tech to create interspecies communication to remove landmines. And in terms of my metaverse contributions, I've designed some art shows and like a, a big science 
exposition uh, using Mozilla Hubs and kind of the you know open source movement of the metaverse development. Um, yeah, so I generally do joy for the world things using emerging technology. Oh, I'm also creating an esports platform uh, for people who have recently left incarceration uh, that lets them do chess in a physical activity. And this is in partnership with a program that's doing a mentorship for people once they're on parole and they've left incarceration. So the idea is to use a metaverse space to help teach chess outside of prison, but hopefully someday within prison, uh, because in the American system, they're in there for about 23 hours a day sometimes. So I think VR and education could be well utilized in that environment. And thank you for being here. Yeah, fantastic. This is, um, you know, these are these are all such great solutions. Of course, you know, Unity, we all know, but, you know, I, I, I love having you know, a blend of, uh, you know, companies that are addressing, you know, their sort of specific realm, um, you know, of immersive technology, which is kind of what we called it until uh, Metaverse became ubiquitous. Um, but, but I'd like to start because there's so much confusion and there's so much hype and so much talk about the Metaverse. I, I'd love to hear from all of you. I think everybody has a slightly different view of, of, you know, how to define the Metaverse and then how to delineate the Metaverse from Web three, and I certainly have my opinion, which uh, you know I'm happy to share. But um, you know, let's let's start with you, Dave, because you and I have already talked about this. <laughs> so, so I'm going to start with you. <laughs> well, I hope my story hasn't changed since the last time we talked. But um, there are five of us on the panel, and probably a couple of dozen watching right now. And and I would say that we all have an opinion, and I would say we're all wrong. Um, I, I think that uh, the metaverse will manifest itself in something that none of us can actually imagine in the same way that wireless communications or the first generation of uh, the internet, uh, you know, going from DARPAnet to what it is today, um, nobody would have ever imagined that we'd be having this conversation right now in the, in the way we are. So uh, I don't think any of us can say for sure. We believe at Unity and I believe that um, there are some elements that, uh, will make the, the metaverse a fantastic place to be. It will be uh, immersive. It will be interactive. It will be hyper-realistic. Um, and it will be real time uh, on all kinds of different devices. And it, it has the potential to do some great things in this world, to bring us together, to uh, educate us, to... Uh, cure uh, you know, mental and physical illness in, in ways that we haven't imagined yet. Um, and I think it will be frictionless. You know, we talk about uh, metaverse versus Web3 for whatever reason. I think of Web3 very much relative to the underlying technologies and capabilities like blockchain and, you know, what form of cryptocurrency will win out or will there, will there be an Uber version of that? Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, non-fungible tokens, NFTs. That's where my Web3 thinking is. And I, I think that's a little bit behind where common uh, perception of what the metaverse will be. But we don't know. We know it's going to be uh, a fantastic, immersive experience for all of us uh, and uh, looking forward to contributing to it. Excellent. And, I, and, and I'm with you there. And I also think the other component is you know, it's going to, it's also, we're going to call it what consumers call it. You know, it's like no one ended up you know, like World Wide Web never took off. Like it became the internet. Now I just like to refer to it as the interwebs just for fun. But yeah, you know, it's, it's really, we don't have enough users in you know, where they're getting both entertainment and utility to understand really what that, what that, the future of the metaverse holds. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm certainly in line with you there. How about you, Bigan? What are your thoughts on, you know, how you would define metaverse versus web three and you know, what the future holds for it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone has their own definition of metaverse. It's quite interesting for one term doesn't have a widely accepted terminology. Everyone is thinking about how they're thinking about it. Even that uh, gives a proof that, it's something that we cannot even imagine uh, the future of it. And that's why through our imagination, uh, we believe metaverse is a um, opportunity for us to also extend our imagination, creativity uh, through envisioning the things that we cannot see in the physical world. So that's, that's an opportunity for us to became, become 
uh, more creative people or to extract the true potential uh, within ourselves. Uh, and as Elizor, that's how we are approaching the metaverse as art, architecture, design disciplines coming together, coming together to create a new uh, era uh, of a spatial design. I love that. I love that take and, and sort of the human first approach. So, Andrew, as you are currently there, what are you, what are you seeing in that metaverse of yours? It's amazing. It's just not even <laughs> yet. Um, yeah, for me, it has a pretty practical definition. The, the metaverse is a immersive 3D environment or realms of environments with real-time social interaction. And I would argue that if the immersive environment can extend to the physical world in terms of artificial reality overlays, that's also an extension of the metaverse. And I think that borderline or that borderland will spill over will be a really fascinating realm to explore. Um, in terms of Web3, uh, it just seems to be an abandonment of surveillance capitalism and whether or not like a blockchain business model can run <laughs> that, I it's up in the air. So uh, yeah, I think Web3 is just an attempt to build a non-surveillance capitalism inter interwebs um i do i do have a coherent vision of a, a metaverse emerging that kind of spills over to ar um but i'm not sure if the web3 idealism will be realized but yeah we're all here let's rock thank exactly. you exactly exactly i do i do like that you t you talk about that wearing an oculus headset i'm just kidding oh, yeah. um no, we're, no, not gonna, we're not going there happen. i said it i said it but it's late it's late for everybody um so sam your thoughts yeah, I think it's, you know, as you sort of hear people talk metaverse, it's, you know, we don't know what it is, but it's going to be amazing. And which is kind of like almost anytime anyone mentions it, you could just replace that word with the word future. And it's like, what is better? It is the future. It is going to be great. It's going to be social and immersive. We don't know what it is. So I don't know. I, I kind of feel like we read a lot about it. Um, over the last three decades, you know, video games industry, where it all started. Right. We've been rapidly evolving this toolbox of technologies like at Unity, right, where you can create these breathtaking environments and ultra realistic characters. And we build these things for entertainment right? we're telling stories. And these technologies, as you know, as as Dave mentioned, are starting to have major impact outside of games. It's changed the way people learn, changed the way companies interact with customers, creating new ways for people to collaborate remotely. The technologies are basically delivering on this promise of the metaverse. But. The metaverse that you read about in the news, like that's a scam. That's a scam. Like it's a scam at worst. At best, it's a hyped up, ill-informed projection of where game technology will take us. The real value of the underlying technology we're talking about here is actually, if you read the news, it's just being drowned out by the hype. The idea that you're going to put on a meta VR headset and jump into a virtual world where you buy virtual Nike shoes and a bunch of artificial real estate for your digital twin, like this is hype. There's no killer app there. But if you look at the underlying technology, there's actually really interesting things we're doing with it that are that's having broad impact on commerce and education and beyond entertainment. No, I'm glad I'm glad you you brought that up because first of all, the you know, this notion of the metaverse, this is not just fall out of the sky. I mean, you know, the virtual environments have have been around for a long time. Uh, in various you know shapes and forms, um, and it, and it's not going anywhere. And I think the the interesting thing about you know part of that hype discussion is that you know th they're sort of creating this sense of scarcity around NFT. And the beauty of NFT is a, a lot more about you know origin and smart contracts and and for you know artists to truly actually be you know credited and and monetize their creation. Um, but I think that's the wrong approach to go in and try and say, okay, you know, we're dropping this limited number of, of NFTs or, you know, this, you know, s s be, be Snoop's next door neighbor for half a million. Like that's, that's just a revenue first strategy that doesn't really get us where we need to go. I think we need to look at what a, what a value first strategy would look like. And, you know, the money is going to come people. I mean, and unity you're building, you've always had the tools to monetize, right? And you've been thinking about this for a long time. So as we, you know, think about this evolution um, and that, you know, kind of value, and I also think the, the, you know, technology allows for 
a transparent exchange of data for value where we, you know, have the self-sovereign identity. Um, so I'd love to hear what you're thinking about. I don't know if you're allowed to share some of the things that are coming from Unity, but there's certainly a lot of tools that can enable creators today. Well, you know, um, here's, here's what we've been doing in this Let's call it, uh, as Sam described, this uh, maybe last six months since Facebook changed their name uh, and since we started to exit COVID, there's been an onslaught of people uh, coming to us and saying, you know, Metaverse, we got to be in it. We don't know what it is. We don't care what it is. We just got to be in it. And, um, you know, repeatedly we sit down and the conversation goes something like, we don't know what it is either, but here are some practical ways today that you can get, you can uh, get access to technology that's been running in the game industry for many years, very successfully to drive personalized experiences, highly interactive, highly visual, multi-platform uh, capabilities, bring your architects and engineers together, bring your designers and your powertrain engineers together uh, bring everybody together on a virtual set and, you know, shoot films without having to fly across the world, on and on and on and on. And what we're doing is simply taking the tool chest of technology that we have, some of the things that we're innovating that are taking advantage of the cloud and machine learning and, and uh, high-speed networking and new form factors uh, and cost, uh, cost points on headsets and applying them practically to things that'll make a real difference in the world, provide real utility. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, I kind of want to lead that into Andrew, because again, I, you're, you're leading with kind of a humanity first approach. Like you are solving real problems for, you know, for people and uh, you know, how do you see that as, as kind of extending and how, do, how do we actually uh, move past this hype to where we get to, you know, some of the things that Dave's talking about. And, you know, it's not it's not just utility for business. That is that is one of the huge drivers and, and one of the large components. I mean, I, I, I think we're going to, you know, we are going to have digital twin of the entire planet eventually at some point. And we're, build, we're building towards that. Um, but how do we move past the hype where, you know, it's not a killer app, but it's killer utility in the way that our mobile phones are for us today? Yeah, my... my- I think the pandemic got us all in tune with a, a vague notion, at least, of incarceration, right? Like, you cannot leave this room. And so my, my personal journey is I used to teach kind of business mentorship for these short-term MBA programs um, that were done for people who've been incarcerated. And so you're in the prison, and it's just it destroys human dignity and human decency. And until, like you, architecturally, just that environment, like, wipes out our humanity, right? And so the the wardens were kind of equally upset about this. And so I started to kind of think of this notion of space, right? And then you talk to people who are in solitary and they're in a box for 23 hours a day and have to create their own rituals, right? Like their own schedule because they don't know what season it is, right? They barely have a window. And so kind of from that, this idea of like, all right, you know, Facebook is pushing metaverse because they want to do a pivot, blah, blah, blah. But how can you immerse someone into a healthy environment from an unhealthy one? And that was basically my genesis. Um, and so I do think this notion of space and our environment and how our environment that's digital can actually affect us internally and also affect the society we live in. Uh, that was the genesis for my humanity first thing. And then with the pandemic, um, I would just start doing art shows that were in Mozilla Hubs. And Mozilla Hubs is the open source plucky version, you know, against kind of Facebook's meta, right? So you, you almost have like this early web adoption of like the open source people versus the corporate people. Um, but I do think by trying to solve problems that can be solved with the creation of new virtual realms and new opportunities for real-time connectivity, um, such as like providing good education for people who are incarcerated in the American brutal system, uh, then, you know, the, the cracks will emerge and like, you know, the the young green sprouts from the cement of the hype will grow and we can all flourish as a society. That's been my methodology for it. I do think that's a pretty good path, even if it's not like a venture capitalist thing. No. And I, and I, and I, and I also just love your kind of enthusiasm and, and passion for it. And, you know, also for giving me a real softball to be able to lead right into my next question to Begum. So thank you for that too. 
you know, this whole this whole notion of a redefining space, which you're thinking a lot about, um, you know, and again, you know, I, I, I look at this as, as, you know, in a realm of infinite possibility, as opposed to this sort of notion of scarcity. So how are you thinking about it as you are, you know, creating these environments and, and looking at, you know, the design aspect of the architecture itself? Is that a question for me? That's for that's for Big Om because I because okay, I yeah. so I'm riffing off of your your space oh, comment. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How we are seeing the design and architecture aspect is not only for um, subjective uh, tastes of people. It's also re-questioning and redefining what do you need as an architectural element in the metaverse. So that's why since day one. Uh, we started to, as uh, architects, researchers, um, urbanists, what is what is a need for a wood wood beam, wood column in a metaverse? So uh, in in the real life, in the physical uh, reality, we wouldn't do uh, as an as an architectural discipline. We are trained to actually uh, not to do anything dysfunctional because of lots of uh, different constraints. It would affect the budget. It would affect the uh, mood of the people. So as designers, we have the opportunity to affect people's psychology, to have effect on their psychology, their moods, their, even shaping their conversations in a good or bad way. So that's why we want to take this opportunity of creating a design and architecture in the metaverse by not mimicking real life, not just copying it as it is and taking a roof, taking making a house or making it look like an <laughs> interior design. But then what, what's the point uh, and what is the experience that we get out of it? Uh, how, how many minutes can you spend in that environment? So uh, we really want to push the industry forward as a creative economy forward. We want to work with brands. We want to, uh, to work with companies that, uh, that are not questioning the, uh, the need of it in the future, but they know that they can do something that they cannot get, not only about the technology, but also about the design of it. So that's how we see the architecture and design aspect of the metaverse. And I like that you said that. And I, and I think, you know, you do see brands coming in and they're sort of building an exact replica of their Fifth Avenue store. And I said, really adding value. Um, so are you finding that when you're working with brands that, um, you know, they, they are open to this expansive vision, right? Because you can, you, you can literally build anything, <laughs> anything. You know, and so, you know, how do you steer them to, you know, kind of open up their minds in terms of what this, you know, uh, sort of definition of space is, you know, for what Andrew was talking about, um, but but really kind of surprising and, and delighting the end user. But that still it has to draw. You have to be able to draw a line from this kind of new structure to the brand itself. So it's not so surprising for for their you know loyal customers how do you have that how do you balance that conversation with them i think uh, coming from an architectural discipline as a background trains you in a way that you're able to deliver um any kind of brief with your uh, similar design um style let's say so it's always about extracting what what the brand would need uh, by extracting uh, from the conversation. Uh, I, I think I'm not allowed to give any brand names. But so far, we have done lots of different, uh, very um, large uh, corporations as clients. So all of them had different needs. Some of them needed an event space uh, or some of them needed a whole corporate structure uh, change. And the, there is no revenue stream in the model. It's just pure changing the way of the company, the way of the thinking of the people that works in the company. And with some brands, we, uh, we were working for a retail space. But uh, as they were saying, everything is right now is contributing to the future of it, like what we are envisioning. So all of, all of them are the steps that we're taking forward. So I think the brands that are in the metaverse right now uh, that are actively trying with the designers, technology firms, are going to be the pioneers in their uh, own industries because now they're testing, now they're failing maybe, or uh, because we have been there, we have tested, we have went through, and now uh, this is time that we can perform uh, what we can do, but uh, also every month is a 
new year. <laughs> so it's it's uh, time is a different concept as we were talking. So we need to be always adapting to the new technologies uh, and people's also how they people react to it. Yeah, and and so Dave, with your focus on digital twin, and I'm kind of a big believer in you know with your physical space, you you must have a digital twin so that you can kind of hang the new experiences and start to understand what those digital experiences might look like. And then, you know, sort of take the, take away the bounding box and when you build something fully digital in the metaverse, but maybe start to kind of, you know, cut your teeth on the digital twin. You know, you're working across, you know, there's incredible utility, you know, in AEC industry and in just heavy industry in general for digital twin. Um, so how are you able to kind of cover, because they're very different needs as you start to move into the brand world, um, but, you know, they're going to have to have digital twins of their spaces as well. So how do you kind of navigate those conversations and what's the advice you, know, you give to someone on the industry side versus a, a brand, for example? Well, you know, uh, look, di di different uh, sub-segments have different things that they're trying to do. Some are trying to uh, just jump in and here's a brand that we're working with right now, unnamed, trying to figure out how to leverage the metaverse to drive growth with a, a new demographic, a younger demographic that they know they don't get to today in their physical stores or on the web, um, et cetera. And they're trying to figure that out. And so part of the conversation is, again, here are the practical things that you can do uh, but unlike that, uh, but similar to a conversation we would have with an industrial machinery manufacturer or somebody that's doing reverse logistics on a manufacturing line, one of the things that we do is try and tie what's going on out there in the metaverse uh, back to the enterprise, back to the merchandisers, back to the people that are managing inventory. Back to the people that manage logistics, one of the worst problems in, that brands have and, re and retail and e-commerce has is sending, you know, uh, boxes and boxes of merchandise out to our homes just to find that we ordered seven of them knowing we would only purchase one. And somebody's bearing the cost and the world is bear uh, bearing the uh, pollution associated with getting the six other packages back to uh, somewhere to sell at 25% of what they were uh, going for. So we, again, we just try and be real practical about all the great utility that uh, real-time 3D and these immersive technologies and, you know, the ability to tie all this together can have. And uh, it seems to work pretty broadly across all the industry sub-segments uh, that, we, that we're working in. You know, and, and, and you know, kind of beyond the utility. And I, you know, I think that's right. And it's also on a, you know, case by case basis. So it's hard to kind of, you know, paint everyone with the, with the same brush, but, you know, I think we also have to consider the sort of what could go wrong piece of this. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of it revolves around NFT and the current construct. And, you know, if the bottom happens to drop out of that market, how is it going to, you know, impact adoption and kind of uptake of this whole the concept of the metaverse. And, you know, the, a lot of what we can look at, I think, comes from games, right? Because that exists and those worlds exist and they're fully functional and they have, you know, an element of these sort of in-game purchases. And a lot of them now are starting to bring in cryptocurrency. So Sam, you know, how do, how do we, how do we navigate the pitfalls? I, I kind of feel like they're it's, you know, the, the lights are upon us. It is the oncoming train. What, what, what do we do? <laughs> what, if the bottom falls out of NFTs and crypto, the games industry will be absolutely fine. No, exactly. Exactly. But, oh, we're good. We're good. We but don't everybody, need it. Every, everybody else who has invested and, you know, bought digital real estate and bought, you know, NFT and, and now the value is nil, that's going to shut down kind of overarching, I think, investment in the space. And so, you know, you saw a, like a microcosm of that with mobile AR, right? Where their brands were starting spending a ton of money on mobile AR. They had no ROI. Yep. Kind of shut down spending for a couple of years. Then it sort of trickled back in. We don't want that to happen here because it's a much grander scale. Right. So I, I, I think 
This is the entire reason why we need to be talking about practical applications of these things. So like the question is sort of like, well, what if the hype bubble bursts? What happens to all the people that invested in the hype bubble? They shouldn't have invested in a hype bubble. <laughs> they shouldn't have bought tulips. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't, the games industry has been growing double digits year over year by delivering on all of this, connecting, creating massive worlds that are getting bigger and bigger, more and more realistic, connecting more and more people in collaborative, social, competitive environments. And we've been doing it without NFTs. Things are just fine. Um, so like, and that growth is going to continue as we continue to find more and more practical, useful, valuable applications of this technology. Of, no, of I, which there are many. Yes, yes. Well, but but you know, by, he, the, by, by, sorry, by the way, I want to build on I want to build on Andrew's point there a little bit. No, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Sam's point there. I'm not going to build on it. I'm going to kind of take it another direction, which is, I, I, I think it's for me, it's less about whether NFTs and uh, are going to make it, and which crypto or two or three currencies are going to be the predominant ones. What I, sh I think a lot of us should be thinking about and working towards is how do we ensure that this immersive world, wor set of worlds is used for good. I think about uh, in Sam's industry, The Sims. I think about, it, I'm not getting on a pedestal, Grand Theft Auto. I think about all the toxicity that um, can come when it's not managed properly in the game industry. And, you know, honestly, if we don't uh, take keep our eyes on that in the metaverse, I think it could be 10 times as toxic. And that's where I think leaders like us should be, you know, partially focused on making sure that that um, it's, it's, you know, it's as good a world as we could possibly make it. And, and when you actually walk into most of these metaverse experiences nowadays, it's pretty crude. Um, there are some pretty bad things going on in them. And it's not that it's not like a very, you know, fruitful, productive environment. That being said, like, these technologies are being used in other places to, you know, help train and educate and, you know, promote social good. How do we get to that? Um, you know, we, we sort of have a, you know, a social contract in the real world. How do we get there in, in the metaverse? Um, you know, and, and is there, you know, because as soon as you start to say regulatory, you're going, wow, we're going to have a lot of people. I mean, we're all in the industry and I don't know if you are having a challenge with this now, but I'm trying to learn how to set up a DAO. And it is it makes my eyes like the back of my eyes hurt. It's so complex. <laughs> and, you know, so it's hard to keep, you know, if we're in the industry to sort of keep up with this onslaught of technology. Um, and yet we, it, I think we all agree we need some regulation but there's the sort of the risk of it being over-regulated when, when it gets in front of people who don't necessarily understand the technology and the nuance. And where's that balance? Like, I feel like we need to, to take control of some of these environments. Because to your point, I think that the, the gamer kind of, the way that they interact with one another isn't the way you interact with people in the real world. Um, and it's, it's sort of, you know, been pervasive in these... Um, even in VR chat, you know, which is sort of this, it was this innocuous construct, but, you know, people, when you first would go in, they would literally like, you know, jump on your head. And there was like, it went way downhill from there to where they had, you know, you had, you, they had to develop your personal bubble. So what, what is the kind of, what is our role in it? And what do you think the role of regulatory is? And I, and I think actually this is sort of an important topic. So I think maybe if we can all sort of maybe just chat about this for a bit. Well, I mean, we shouldn't, you know, you can't put all the blame on the games industry. The internet in general is pretty bad on this front. Like you never, no, wanna, no, no, I'm not, I'm the blaming people, the games like, industry never read the comments. All. It's like, that's what, <laughs> that, that's what we're talking about here. Right. It just so happens the comments are coming out of a virtual avatar's mouth, but who can also do, you know, a crude dance and get too close to you in the virtual environment, but it's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then what are your thoughts on, on kind of the regulatory component? I was at um, the expo in Dubai recently and they, they were talking about uh, a version of this and they did these sort of, you know, polls as you came out and uh, that they actually just asked the audience that question. And, you know, it was overwhelmingly in the favor of the government, which I found really interesting because is it, I mean, 
how much can they really regulate what happens in here? Like, I mean, how do we kind of create this, the same sort of social contract in these environments that we have in the real world? Anybody. <laughs> this problem is not unique to the metaverse. Like what should happen on Facebook? Like we see what happens when did we allow these platforms to like polarize people. And I mean, I argue the whole idea, the whole idea of this meta thing, right? You know, what does meta mean, right? Meta, in, it's Greek. It means beyond. So metaverse mm -hmm. is like the universe beyond. I mean, why did this all start six months ago? Because Facebook had a couple things they needed to get beyond. Right? <laughs> like, you know, their role in polarizing the country and, you know, January 6th. And, you know, a lot of this meta rebranding, I think we can agree is, you know, kind of like an for the tail to wag the dog. But like the metaverse doesn't change the problem. It's the same problem on your Facebook wall as it is, you know, inside a 3D virtual environment built on Unity. Well, true. Well, first of all, Sam, that might be the funniest explanation that I was, I, I was trying to keep myself from laughing very, very loudly into the <laughs> microphone, but that was, that was a great statement. Um, well, yes, but there, I think they're a little, uh, you know, it, it just gets ratcheted up in these virtual environments. You can't unsee something that you've seen in, you know, a virtual environment when you have a headset on it's, it's a much more visceral experience. Um, and then since you're, since you're still, Oh, he just, I'm just about to, <laughs> He's coming back. I hope he's oh, coming. There he is. There he is, Andrew. So, so Andrew, since again, since you're in there, I don't know. I don't know which world you're in. Um, what are your thoughts on kind of this, you know, general, you know, how, just how do we uh, make make the world a better place in these virtual environments instead of you know continue down kind of the negative polarizing path of of social that some of social media has has gone down. Anybody can pop in on that I, one. I, the the I way to do it that. is to create. Begum has an answer. Oh, go for it. Begum <laughs> has the answer to all of it. Good. When you say we're like gonna, that, we're going to solve this. <laughs> but I think um, I completely agree with Sam that uh, we are just uh, reimagining all the current problems that we have in the current social media and everything. And when we go back to the roots of how we are defining the metaverse, we are saying, firstly, it's for everyone. And when we say it's for everyone, then we would need to accept the fact that there might be uh, some things that some people won't accept and some things that other people are, uh, will accept. So the regulatory part is something um, depending on the which area we are looking at. But if you're looking from the design aspect, uh, we can we can be in charge as the designers uh, to lead it uh, to design for the good, for the good of the metaverse. So this might seem very broad, but uh, these kind of decision making people are going to shape how it looks, how it feels. And um, there, there will be lots of creators as well. And through the education and through the awareness, I think it might be uh, a solution. And also, um, when we are talking about a two-dimensional interface as a current interface we have, maybe it's, it's even harder to control. Uh, but when you are making everyone uh, as their virtual bodies in a space, then the control mechanism might act differently. Uh, no, so may maybe it's even, uh, it's not as chaotic as we imagine. Maybe it's going to be easier for us to regulate things because now uh, you have power to uh, have the people that has the same common interest that made them in that space, in that room for a reason. Uh, but then the data point would be a, uh, probably a question and who holds it. And I, I think all of these questions are currently being asked for, answered from the all of the industries, questioned and answered in the same time. Yeah, I, I don't think there's an answer to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I, we're, not, we're definitely not going to solve it here in seven minutes, but I think it is worth a discussion. And, and, and even just the dialogue itself is is sort of acknowledgement of like, you know, we need to put some guard rails in place. Um, the other thing that I find interesting that we'll close out with, because we have uh, about six minutes left. Um, so if we could just, you know, kind of do some final thoughts around, you know, it, you know, it, Giving giving ourselves some agency in in how this gets built out. Like if if you had the ability to really uh, project us again, you know, into the next like five years, and and if we manage to pick a right path, 
you know, just give us a little, paint us a little picture of what it might look like for, for each of you. Dave, why don't we start with you? Well, look, I, um, I'm, I'm probably quite a bit older than a couple of you and at least a little bit older than a couple of you also. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be part of three significant industry transformations in my lifetime and, and career. And fortunately, all this, and this would be my third, and fortunately, uh, the first two were made the world a better place. And we believe at Unity, and I believe personally that the, uh, the world is a better place with more creators in it, um, creating experiences that bring us together, that entertain us, that make us smarter, that enable us to do things that we can't do physically because you know we can't train in a, an emergency room or we can't build a skyscraper and blow it up and start over again or we can't undo something uh that uh, that is you know caused somebody to be convicted of, of a felony etc um i really uh hope believe i don't hope uh i'm here because i believe that what we're doing can make the world a better place and i think Again, whatever the metaverse will be, I think all of us have a responsibility to make sure that um, the wor the hybrid world that we're we're going into is even more richer and and more beautiful than than it is today. And Sam, what's your sort of you know <laughs> idea of the future of Sam? No, yeah. Sam. So Sam, Sam's sort of happy metaverse five, like five ish years from now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not five years from now. It's now. No, I'll show you. I'll, I will. I will show you here. You said paint the picture. I will show you. Right. Yeah. What is what is the picture? What what does good for society? It's visceral. Let's use an example that uses unity. Um, here, do you have? We'll do this. Amy, do you have a phone with you? I do. All right, grab your phone. Nobody else oh. join. This is just Amy. I'm going to show. We're going to show everybody. All right, here. Here's what we're going to do. All right. So, Amy, what I want you to do is go ahead and just snap that QR code that you saw. Nice. I'll show you. We'll show a visceral example of the metaverse that is good for society. Oh, it's having a hard time. Hold on. I got to expand the window here. Stand by. Don't I can, I can message you. Me. I got it. Here we go. All right. Maybe this link. Can I hold this up? There you go. Okay, great. All right. Perfect. Loading okay. and loading. So now. Oh, we got to load it up one second. Here we go. Okay. I'll send you the link. So what I'm going to demonstrate is um, an example. This one will do built, built on Unity, which is an example of metaverse technology being applied today. So what phone are you using? Android, iOS? Uh, iOS. Okay. Um, all right, great. So here, this is what you see on your phone. You see this knee. Uh, it's, it's, still, it's still loading because I'm on hotel Wi-Fi, sadly. Oh. <laughs> this is going to get visceral. Can you see it? I can see it on your screen. I don't see it on no, mine. Not on your phone? Like, nope. Right, I'm going to send this to somebody else. Hold on. Okay. Somebody else who has better connectivity. I Who's home? Good, Who's I at have home? good bandwidth. I have to see this. All right, Dave, okay. here. I'm going right, to just message you. I'm going to message it to you. Here. There you go. Just get that link. I just messaged you in the thing. Otherwise, I'll pull up the QR code again. Pull up the QR. Okay. There you Please. go. But now we are curious too. We should we should have the link. We'll see it. We'll see it. <laughs> yeah, the elite's taking it over. All right, there we go. Perfect. I see, I see the leg. I see All right, the perfect. leg. You see the knee. All right. Oh, good. Okay. So here we go. Good. Excellent. So you see it on your phone. So everything that you see on your phone, I'm doing. So I'm, I'm placing up on the screen. screen. I'm go. placing these retractors. This. I'll put your phone down because we're going to need to do this again. You're going to you're going to do this with me in a second. So I can control this. I can open up the knee here on the left. Dave, I want you to open up the knee on the right. Okay. This is an example of metaverse technology being applied today. So Dave, you're what? You're in California. Yeah? Yes. I'm in Chicago. So we're like 2,000 miles apart, and we're doing surgery together on a digital twin of a patient simulated in the cloud. Right, yeah, just you go ahead and you can just insert the insert the thing. So this is an example, right? How we can use this kind of technology remotely to train surgeons how to do surgery. And Dave and I like didn't have to install any app. We're here talk about Web three. We're not using any new VR headsets. We're using what is this called? The run of the world, you know, run the world, yeah. run of the world yeah. thing. 
and he and I are doing this together, right? So this is an example of metaverse technology being applied today in a way that like helps industry, helps you know medical device companies, and also helps patients. And you don't need to wait five years for this. But this is not the stuff you hear about on the news. No, right? this is the 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 and this one happens also to be built on Unity. But again, like these are ways that we're using the technology today to have positive impact on society. So how do you do that? It's make sure you're building the experiences that are going to provide the value. I love that. And, and I'm extremely happy that a bored ape did not jump out of the, the knee. <laughs> that's, that's the unreal version. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're just taking shots left and right here. <laughs> All right. I, we cannot follow that. That is the perfect way to end this session. Uh, for those of you who are kind enough to join us today, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to my amazing panelists here. You did a fantastic job. And I love the discussion and we should all keep talking about this to make sure that we really do make the world, all the worlds, a better place. <laughs> Thank you, Emmy. Thanks so much. Thank you, amazing. everybody. Be well. Awesome host. Bye. <laughs>